you'll notice here that I can choose different line styles and so forth if I had line styles so let's add a line style color onto this okay there you go and go to the properties inspector and as you can see that you can increase the stroke it's as easy as one two three just sliding it along you can choose the line type you can choose uh, the scale you can scale it horizontally vertically so 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 on and so forth okay and you'll see that in every tool we have lots and lots of options available okay and you can use uh, hinting to prevent blurry lines when you have um, when you're creating radial corners like this so if I set this to five I can unlock them all and change the way that they uh, each one functions just by clicking this button here I unlock and I can edit each corner so I can make this one 10 like that I can also reset the values as well but when you have these types of corners you can see the edges get a little bit blurry when they're very thin so you just turn on the hinting and it sets it all right it does a good job of it okay so those are one of the things that you can do now also I'm going to be showing you the 3D uh, rotation tool. I want to go through some of the new tools in the panel. Um, and the first one, the most exciting one, is the 3D rotation and 3D translation tool. You press W and G on your keyboard to get this. So if you want to use this perspective 3D tool, you have got, and I will say got, to have a symbol. So I'm going to create a symbol. I'm not sure if I haven't made one already. There's the other symbol. Let's just drag that symbol out the library. Okay. Now this symbol is exactly the same. Also, you'll notice a nice little new feature is um, an opacity um, feature. So that's where the object has been, and this is where the object is where I'm dragging it to. And it's also got some really nice grids as well. I don't I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little green line dragging up the top, saying, "Hey, that's aligning it to the." Send top and center and side of the stage. It's really great. Um, so it helps you align up objects also. So if I was to copy this and paste it, I can hopefully align this up like that. Can you see the line that comes in there? There you go, there's the line. You can see those green lines. It helps you align up objects. I believe that was in Flash CS3, but I'm not quite sure. I believe it was. But the opacity thing wasn't there, and you know, sometimes I've uh, I've been working on big design projects, you know, design, you know, this big project, and I've accidentally there's loads of stuff on the stage. I've accidentally clicked on it and I moved it, and I went, oh, I don't want to move that. So this makes it really nice to just position it back again, and using that grid, it just snaps into place. I believe you have to have objects snap, uh, snap to objects on in order to uh, in order to align objects like that. Now you've also, um, again, as I said, got to have this um, as a symbol if you want to use a 3D rotational tool. Okay, so basically, you could make stuff look um, 3D. You know, if you kind of, if you, if you were good at it, you know, you could make it look a bit 3D. But it, it's not very good for animation. If you wanted to animate this as 3D you would use uh, these tools that are built in. Now I'm just going to use the 3D translation tool which is G first because that's easier. Essentially what you've got in the properties inspector is the options 3D position and view. That's the one you want to be looking at. You've also got display and also filters under the properties tab. So it's no filters is no longer on its own tab. Okay. You can't move any of these uh, collapsible panels by the way. You can also choose position and size of a um, of a symbol, but you have to you must be selecting a symbol to get these options. You've also got color effect. You can choose brightness, alpha, and so forth, like you had before. You had the display, which is you know the blend modes and bitmap caching, and also filters. It's just positioned differently. I think it's more productive, a lot more productive, because having it docked to the bottom, it kind of took up a lot of real estate space uh, for some people anyway, and so you know it can cause problems. Now you also have the z-axis, the x-axis and the y-axis okay so with every 3D application 
hopefully as I've already explained in other uh, 3D tutorials I've already done um, you must have three axes if you want it to be a 3D application it cannot be uh, two axes because two axes means it's it's 2D but 3D needs three makes sense okay so there's the Z axis it keeps everything in perspective there's the X axis and there's the Y axis the easiest way to remember this uh, which someone taught me is RGB okay red which is X G which is green for Y and blue is Z okay so sorry I'm just gonna move this out of the way okay um so RGB XYZ okay very easy to remember but if if you don't like that just remember red is X green is Y and blue is Z now it doesn't look blue here um, and that is because what you've got here is um, a problem you're looking it at a 2d perspective okay and this can happen in 3d you're looking it as a 2d perspective but essentially when you move it closer it becomes starts to become 3d okay now you can move the perspective around like that once you get this type of arrow okay that type of cursor you can move it around you can change the perspective point so when you want to drag this up you'll see there it's now changing the z-axis now you'll see when I roll over it it has the same cursor but it has the z underneath as well as this one has the x underneath and this one has the y underneath so the cursor actually indicates what axis you are selecting now you have got the 3d rotational tool as well this is the y-axis again the cursor shows you now it's not dragging across you have to drag this is great for page effects by the way um, but essentially what you have here is a is, is around the circle you have to go around the circle like you would with a compass to rotate things okay now you also have that's probably not the best position to put it in but it's, it is fantastic as you can see many designers would have wanted this ages ago then you've also got the x-axis across the top here okay and you've also got the z-axis which is the blue that's going around okay around the entire other two axes okay and you can rotate that around like that okay so brilliant perspective 3d even though it's not a true 3d application it does a very good job of it okay so around this outer circle which is the orange outer circle okay you can see here you can rotate it freely I can rotate this wherever I want wherever I want it to go I just click and drag on the outer circle and I can change the perspective on that object but you can see you can create some really great 3d effects and it stops you having to be the artist to develop um, 3d kind of design works so it's fantastic and you've got the X Y and Z across there as well okay but you must make sure you're using 3d translation tool and so forth if you want to do that you can also change again the perspective by getting that arrow that cursor that doesn't say Z underneath it, X underneath it, or Y underneath it, it just has the basic cursor. You can drag it around and change perspective. So if I was to now rotate in 3D, as you can see, it's now rotating in 3D. It's fantastic. Alright, so you can actually, believe it or not, create animations using this type of technique, so you're not limited by that anyway. And it stops you having to be a 3D developer, because these tools are the basic tools to get the job done. So it's uh, it's really fantastic to, uh, to see this happening. Okay, so once you've done that, once you've done that, you can... Um, you can use some other tools, um, some of the, the brand new tools you may have spotted out here.